Yo, what's going on everybody? It's the chicken, a YouTuber that makes videos about chickens and ducks and gardening. So I just want to announce that we are trying to reach 1,000 subs. So if you want to help me out, just please do so. All right, so we're going to start out here in the garden air. So we're going to start out here in the strawberry and blueberry patch. I made a tutorial of how to grow strawberries. It's a little hard to see that, but I reckon you'd be able to see the flowers on these, like those white things right over here. I'd reckon you'd be able to see those, but those white flowers that you might see poking up on my GoPro right there, those are um, not strawberry flowers. And this strawberry looks like it's being attacked by whatever the hell is in our garden every night. I don't know if it's a deer or if it's that goddamn groundhog, but whatever it is, it is in the garden and it is really annoying me. So, you know what, I hope the deer doesn't decimate our garden, and if it does, I will be very sad, obviously. Because we've worked, I don't know, I gotta say like, most of the day on the garden, transplanting it in that video, you know. This is where we actually have um, presence of mulch. See, for um, our strawberries, we use uh, straw as compost right here, as you, can, as you might be able to see. Um, and then over here we use mulch, which is not compost, we have mulch back there. All right, so this, so we currently have sticks of blueberries. They're not terribly tall, but they last for 15 years. So don't be terribly surprised if they grow a lot taller than what they currently are right now. So we have some blueberries coming in. As long as these goddamn bugs that are currently swarming get off, we will actually have some blueberries, all right. So here are the blueberries and you know they're ready when they're like dark blue. And then when you can, and you know they're also ready when you can just like grab them and they'll easily come right off. There's more blueberries right over here. This time in a more abundant form. Right there, you might be able to see that if you um, look there. So back here, instead of having anything that's actually useful, we just have an abundance of weeds over here. Ah, oh, my camera. Come on. We just have like an abundance of weeds over here. Like that's pretty much all we have. And the reason behind this is because we don't remember what we are gonna be planting here. So at the end of the season, like around like early August, mid August, you're going to be planting some, you know, we're going to be planting some broccoli. I don't know why I said you know, even though I know you probably don't know. But these three rows I'm going to be going over in this little clip that I'm filming on my normal Canon Power Shot. Uh, I'm not even going to read that because that is a long name. All right, so here are the gourds and um, yeah, this, these are going to be needing a trellis. And now a trellis, if you don't know what a trellis is, it's this right here. So you see this? We where you can just like have everything attached to everything, that's a trellis. And we have some, we're gonna need a trellis, but um, our trellis that we used for the beans last year, that's all the way down there at the dog run. So we have our stuff over here, we have, this looks like gourds. Uh, these gourds look like they got a pretty nice jump start in their growing season. And then we have green beans over here. Yeah, as you can clearly see, uh, the green beans are definitely gonna be needing a trellis to grow up. These look pretty nice right now, actually. And then over here, we have more gourds. Yeah, gourds, just so you know, I don't know if those those are gourds or not, but I know for a fact these are gourds. Now, if you don't know what a gourd is, they're like really decorative pumpkins, they're smaller. And I'll show you our pumpkin patch. We're whopping eight pumpkins out of the 125 we intended came up this year. Yeah, that was all I had to film really quickly. Let's go and let me give you a tour of the broccoli, zucchini, eggplants, and other stuff. All right, so over here we currently have a uh, broccoli. Now the broccoli is doing pretty damn well over here right now. We have a couple in this uh, DIY repurposed um, broccoli cage. I could teach you how to make one, but I don't have the supplies. Broccoli in development for those of you that just get broccoli at the store. This is what an in developed broccoli looks like. Just so you know, you might be able to tell. And then this is some more broccoli up there, more broccoli around this area. Yeah, in about a week or so, I'm actually going to be releasing a video about um, the honey harvest. I've, last year, um, the day we were going to do the honey harvest, it was during a hurricane, so I had to film that video instead. Um, and here is more broccoli. And there's plenty that are almost ready for harvest, too. I, I think I just saw one a minute ago. I am not very smart with this stuff. All right, so there's more broccoli around here. I can go on all day talking about this stuff. But now we are over here, so we have three eggplants. And actually, we actually have a flower. You know, things are starting to come up a little in the season. You know, I saw this flower the other day. Thought it looked pretty cool. This is what the eggplant flower looks like. It's spiky to touch, so try not to touch it. It actually hurt when I just touched it. Or am I just a wuss? I probably am. But here we go, we have 
some taller eggplant. This has got to say about two foot six, two foot seven. I don't know. And then we have um, zucchini in a really nice abundance over here. Ooh, we have some flowers starting to come in on this one. Uh, we have plenty of flowers starting to come in. As you can clearly see, we have these flowers right there. More flowers right over here. More flowers right there. More flowers in there, there, and yeah, basically all the zucchini currently does have flowers in them. All right, now this is the trellis I showed you earlier in this video, but we are currently in our cucumbers and cherry tomatoes area. Now cherry tomatoes, these are definitely gonna be needing a trellis to grow up on. We've done this for the past couple of years. Cherry tomatoes are one of the easiest types to, to grow, in my opinion. And then we have some of those flowers starting to come in, you know. We have some pretty tiny cherry tomatoes right here. They're not yet in the array and abundance of colors. Like, here, let me show you this one right here. Uh, starting to get its colors, but I honestly don't know. I do and there's more tomatoes right here. And then right over here, we have cucumbers coming in. Now, unfortunately, it looks like these cucumber plants, I don't know if it's like, not a, that's not getting them a lot of fertilizer or something, but it looks like they are dying. But right here, it looks like we do have a few live cucumbers that almost look like they are ready to harvest. And these ones are brand new into the garden. And you have this one right under here. This one also looks like it's almost ready to harvest. Um, these are starting to turn yellow, so that's kind of a concern for the garden. I don't know. All right, here are the sunflowers right over here. You might be able to tell because these are much taller than any other weeds. I think this is the great six. I think this is the greatest succession we've ever had in growing any form of sunflower. Now I know for a fact this probably isn't a sunflower, but questioning the judgment of that one, I know for a fact this is a sunflower. And this one's also a sunflower. It might be because I planted them a little bit too deep, but you never know. Sunflowers have like the lowest germination rate. Well, corn has like, well, like an 83% germination rate, five out of six germination rate. You know, it's a pretty decent one. So if you really want something with a really good germination rate, yeah, corn is definitely your way to go. Sunflowers, on the other hand, they're a pain to plant. Like, like if you really want to just like plant something quickly, corn is a good um, example of this. But if you want to have like, like a farm stand or something like that with corn, you're going to need an entire field. And I'm going to show you that right now. All right, so we are going to be giving you this long, prolonged tour of our peppers and our tomatoes. Basically, this is going to be like basically like a really short life story. And we're also going to be talking a little bit about basil. These are currently what we have out of our, I don't remember these are yellow or orange peppers, but we don't have green peppers because basically a green pepper is just an under harvest, any other color of pepper right here. So this one looks like it's starting to turn yellow. So do these. And then we have this one that just formed. It looks like it's about to develop colors. And then we have a pepper flower right in here. You might be able to tell, yeah. And then we have this one, which almost looks like a jalapeno pepper, but it is not. We don't grow jalapeno peppers. These are orange. I think these are, yeah, these are the orange ones for sure. Because I remember like, no, nah, these are the orange ones, I think. All right, I can't talk because I clearly don't know what a pepper is. But here are our orange peppers, because I remember like something onto our garden ripped out a pepper right there. Looks like it's now dying. And well, it just got like gripped out and that's when we noticed it was an orange pepper. And this whole area is filled up with an abundance of orange peppers. Now these are much younger, so we only have this one flower and a couple more developing ones right there. And then right over here, we have some basil and some tomatoes. I don't know if these are Romas or 4th of July's or whatever the hell we grow in our garden. But yeah, this is what happens when you have deer in your garden. Kind of see that a lot of the foliage of this plant was just like bitten right off of this thing. And yeah, more foliage bitten right off. And then right over here, we have basil. Or you are not too psyched to see, oh, there goes some fireworks. Or you're not too psyched to see flowers on this. So I'm gonna go rip this off once I'm done filming. Because once you do that, your plant is no longer good. It looks like the deer is trying to rip off that stuff. And yeah, there is just... The deer is becoming sort of like a big threat to our garden right now. And yeah, Roma tomatoes are the ones that you're going to want to use for growing... For having like... I don't remember if it's like marinara sauce or ketchup. Yeah, it's probably marinara sauce, but I don't care. We had some last year that was pretty damn good, actually. And once we have that, I could definitely release a tutorial of talking about this stuff. 
but it looks like none of our Romas are currently at the stage that we want them to be at yet. And yeah, we have plenty of, we have a giant abundance of them right over here. More not too psyched to see flowers. More not too psyched to see flowers, you know. This is where we actually get into a, a huge abundance of these. These are just huge amounts of, uh, what's it called? It's just a huge amount of them. Tomatoes, these are huge. Like, when you put this up into comparison, it is a huge amount of tomatoes compared to like one plant. I'm now I always leave these out of the garden tours. So that's why I made like a YouTube shorts last week because I didn't have enough time to get anything else. But we do have some of our, uh, what's it called? Potatoes over here and these are just really doing good right now. Like we started out with like one of those giant potato seeds. Here I'll show you what they look like up on screen right now, but this is amazing. God, we have to, got, we have gotten a lot of potato plants and our goal is to get a couple of potatoes this year. I don't know if we're gonna be selling them up at the farm stand or not, but we have gotten at least 300 strawberries this year. And I'll give you a little progress at the end of the video of how good we've done this year. And yeah, I think this is probably your best year for selling stuff as far as our farm stand goes. All right, the, we are up in the pumpkin patch and the corn patch over there right now. So we are currently talking a little bit about stuff around here, but unfortunately this is not a pumpkin, this is milkweed. And this is something I'm probably not gonna wanna touch because if I do, I will more than likely regret it. There it goes. I'm stepping on a lot of milkweed right now. A lot of horse flies on my head. And it looks like we got one pumpkin up at this row. Over at this row, I planted this row, so yeah. My terrible quality was probably the reason for this. But this is currently our only pumpkin over here. And it grew outside of the thing right here. Now that's thinking outside of the box, if you know what I mean. On this row, we got another pumpkin that came out of the row right here. This one actually looks pretty decent, but, but pumpkins have a really low germination rate. And yeah, we're gonna have to go up here and water them because we are in a drought right now. It actually looks like it'll be a pretty prolonged event and that's what I'm currently worried about. On this row, we got a pretty decent survival rate on this row. We got two out of our, like, what, like, I think this is like 25 plants. So two divided by 25, that is a really small number. That is probably around 10%, I don't know what it is. And this row actually has the highest survival rate, for a pumpkin at least. And on this row they actually had the highest accuracy, as per usual over here, because this row wasn't planted by me. And guess what, there's another pumpkin that sprawled right out of its thing right there. These are some more pumpkins. Here's another one right here, and then we have one right here, one right here. And this is our best performing one, because this one actually looks like it's about to start developing some pumpkins in there. And that is pure information, right there. And yeah, we gave him about two feet to sprawl out around the area. And yeah, up here we have some pumpkin, I mean, corn, I can't speak. We have another row right here. And this is basically all we've gotten done with so far. But the second row of corn was less of a succession than this one. Yeah, the first one, we weren't in a drought yet. The second one, yeah, we're in a drought. So yeah, it's not a terrible drought yet. Don't jinx my luck, please. But this is definitely something that I should really be taking note of. And yeah, look at this cool little pumpkin thing right here. This is really smooth. And we have this whole abundance of them and hopefully we'll get the harvest around um, mid-August. So that was about it, I, that was all I had to offer for this simple little garden tour. If you did enjoy, fly right into that subscribe button so I can be able to reach 1,000. We are still trying to reach that. We gained a whopping one subscriber off of last night's video. So let's try to get this video up to 3,000 views. And you know what, this time I'm gonna do a less ambish, ambitious goal of 150. And I will literally make a documentary about anything that you'll write in the comments that has anything to do with gardening. So yeah, let's end that video now. Comment your ideas down below.